Hello everyone, it's PaleoNerd back with another creature profile. This time we'll be covering the giant, rather unique theropods, Olophrosaurus. Specifically, we will go over the story of its discovery, as well as its classification, appearance, diet, environment, possible cause of extinction, and any appearances it has made in pop culture. To start things off, for anyone who didn't see my natural history video on ceratosaurs, Olophrosaurus is a genus of ceratosaurian theropod, which currently includes one species, Olophrosaurus bambergi, or Bamberg's light-footed lizard, which refers to the fact that it is believed to have been a fast runner and honors Paul Bamberg, who financed the expedition that discovered the animal. It has been found in the middle dinosaur member of the Tendaguru Formation in Tanzania, which has been dated to the Kimmeridgian Age of the Late Jurassic, about 154 to 150 million years ago. Although fossils of another species or a close relative have also been found in the Morrison Formation in the United States, which is of similar age. At an estimated length of 6.2 meters or 20 feet long, a height of 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of over 200 kilograms or 460 pounds, it is currently the largest known member of the family Noasauridae. The first fossils to be attributed to Olophrosaurus were discovered over a century ago in 1910 and it would be described 10 years later in 1920 by Werner Janensch, a German paleontologist who was also part of the expedition that discovered the original fossils. However, when it came time to classify this new animal, Porolophosaurus would be put on quite the roller coaster ride before landing where it is now. When Werner Janensch first described Olophrosaurus in 1920, he had, he had it placed in Solurosauria, which at the time was a wastebasket group used to classify all small theropods regardless of their relations to each other. Then, eight years later in 1928, Franz Nopska placed Olophrosaurus in the family Ornithomimidae based on its light frame and slender humerus. However, Janensch was quick to reject this placement, chalking up many of the similarities between Olophrosaurus and Ornithomimids as convergent evolution. Afterwards, Olophrosaurus had been placed in Soluridae, another wastebasket group, for much of the 20th century, and the Ornithomimid theory was revived by Dale Russell in 1972 and later confirmed by Peter Galton in 1982. Then, in 1988, Georgia's Paul suggested a position in Coelophysidae based on similarities in the fossils to that of Coelophysis. Other paleontologists gave it an ornithomimid classification throughout the 1990s until two studies, both led by Matthew Carano, one in 2008 and another in 2012, assigned Olophrosaurus to a basal position in the clade Ceratosauria. There, it would stay until 2016, when the subfamily Olophrosaurinae was created within the family of Noasauridae, within Ceratosauria. In this group was Olophrosaurus, as well as Limusaurus, Spinostrophius, and other possible members throughout the Jurassic and early Cretaceous. While its exact relations within Olophrosaurinae are unknown, Olophrosaurus is likely closely related to Spinostrophius, another African Olophrosaurine, which preceded Olophrosaurus, possibly even being an ancestor. As if constantly changing its taxonomic placement wasn't enough, Olophrosaurus has also had a significant evolution in its appearance, or at least what paleontologists believe the animal looked like. Although not quite to the extent of Spinosaurus, Olophrosaurus has gone through many changes, mostly in the head and arms. During the time when it was classified as a coelophysoid or basal ceratosaur, Olophrosaurus was depicted with a decently large skull with sharp teeth typical for a theropod, accompanied by small clawed hands. 
As such, a Lophosaurus was considered to be a predator of smaller animals during this time. But that all changed when the family Alophrosornae was formed and it was found to be closely related to Lemosaurus. Short breakdown of Lemosaurus, it's a small theropod that, when born, had teeth and was likely an omnivore, but it would eventually lose these teeth as it grew and take on a more herbivorous diet. We can likely apply this logic to Alophrosaurus, and while no skull has been found for Alophrosaurus yet, it likely had a toothless beak like its relative Lemosaurus, while juveniles may or may not have had teeth. Using Lumusaurus as a model, the clawed hands of old Olaphrosaurus would also have to go, being replaced with small hands with small, mostly useless fingers similar to those of the Abelosaurids, to which Olaphrosaurus would have been closely related as a ceratosaur. Other details of Olaphrosaurus' appearance include a long neck as well as a long and slender body while also being shallow chested and having relatively short legs for its size. This body plan, which is slightly similar to other ceratosaurs like Ceratosaurus and Majungasaurus, likely meant that while it could run pretty fast, a Lophrosaurus wouldn't have been able to make quick turns to evade predators, instead relying on pure sp speed and stamina. One final nail in the coffin of the old carnivorous Olophrosaurus is that studies have shown that its neck was not nearly as flexible as carnivorous theropods, further suggesting that it is indeed an herbivore, or at least an omnivore. To be honest, I really like new Olophrosaurus, just like I like new Spinosaurus. It's just more interesting when certain theropods are found to have more unique diets than just eating other dinosaurs, and it further proves the extent of the diversity of theropods. Speaking of other dinosaurs, Alophrosaurus lived with quite a lot of them. During the late Jurassic, the Tendaguru Formation is believed to have been a semi-arid environment, perhaps even similar to the modern-day African Serengeti. This would have supported a large assortment of wildlife, especially dinosaurs, including sauropods like Dicreosaurus, Giraffatitanensia, Torneria, as well as the Ornithopod Dicelotosaurus and the Stegosaurid Kentrosaurus. The only named theropod in the middle dinosaur member besides Alophrosaurus is the Cocarodontosaurid Veteruprisosaurus although indeterminate remains possibly belonging to Ceratosaurus have also been found. Other animals include the Pterosaur tendagoripterus, the crocodiliform bernisartia, as well as a multitude of fish, mammals, amphibians, and even vertebrates like sea snails and ostracods, the last of which suggests that the formation may have been partially aquatic. As with most animals covered in these profiles, it's not really known how Olaphrosaurus went extinct or whether it truly went extinct or simply evolved into another genus. In fact, Olaphrosaurus iguidiensis, a now invalid species of Olaphrosaurus, is known from northern Africa in early Cretaceous sediments and may be closely related to Alophrosaurus proper, although it is likely another genus. Aphromimus from the Ellerhas formation in Niger is another potential descendant of Alophrosaurus, although Aphromimus's exact placement in Ceratosauria is uncertain, and it's possible that it isn't an Alophrosaurine. Still, with the potential descendants and the lack of a proper extinction event at the end of the Jurassic period, does make it possible that Alophrosaurus simply fell victim to speciation and evolved into another genus, or several. However, that doesn't rule out the possibility that Alophrosaurus did indeed go extinct, along with other Jurassic animals like Allosaurids and Megalosaurids, possibly due to a change in climate. Now, this is the part where I would cover the different movies, shows, documentaries, video games, etc. that Olafrosaurus has appeared in and briefly go over how accurate they are. And believe me, I would love to do that. 
but there is just one problem. Alophrosaurus hasn't made any appearances in pop culture that I know of. The closest being that it supposedly appears on the holoscape in Jurassic World, but I can't really make anything out and it doesn't really count since we never actually see the animal in the flesh. Well, I'm glad that means that we don't have to see the now inaccurate carnivorous Alophrosaurus. It's also disappointing that we haven't been able to see the new herbivorous Alophrosaurus on screen either. In fact, the only Alophrosaurine to get any appearance in pop culture yet would be Lemosaurus, briefly in the National Geographic documentary Dino Death Trap. So basically, what I'm saying is, if anyone out there is making a new documentary, do us all a favor and include Alophrosaurus and depict it accurately. I'll literally give out two dollars to the first person to include Alophrosaurus in a documentary if I have to, because this needs to happen. That wraps up today's profile, which was definitely a breath of fresh air compared to the utter confusion that was the Spinosaurus profile. Next up should be the scientific analysis of Jurassic Fight Club's ninth episode, Ice Age Monsters, followed by another creature profile on Mapusaurus. That's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hope you learned something new today. And as always, this is PaleoNerd signing out.